Hi. Almost two years ago, one of the very first videos I made was a final testing video of a customer's Newtone LBC55 musical electronic door chime. It was actually the first or second video I ever made on our YouTube channel, and it was pretty silly. It was about a minute and a half long, and I just rang the chime and didn't say much, and there's a learning curve on YouTube, so I think our videos are better nowadays. But today, we have another LBC55 in for repair, and I thought I would show you a little more about it and tell you a little bit more about it and see if we could do a decent follow-up video. This came from a customer in Canada. This is not going to be so much a repair video as, as it is an overview of the pitfalls of trying to repair something like this. So this particular LBC55 is from 1980. LBC55 is a variation on the standard LB55 and the difference is the LBC has an LED display here in the center and it has a programmable clock and then you can set the clock to strike on the quarter hour, half hour, or on the hour. And this customer has this connected up to an intercom system and he likes the clock and the chiming feature and all of that. So we're going to see if we can get it sorted out for him. So just to show what it's like before I start, let's go ahead and power it up. And you might be able to see here, if I shade it, the display comes up as 123 and the intensity of the LEDs kind of fluctuates a little bit there. Go ahead and ring it and see what it sounds like. I can promise you that's not what a Westminster chime is supposed to sound like on an LBC55. Let's see if we can program it for another tune. Not sure what that was exactly. Let's try one more. Oops. So believe it or not, that's the anniversary waltz. And again, that's not what it's really supposed to sound like. So I'm gonna take it all apart and then we're gonna talk about LBC55s. And a lot of this applies to LB55s also because they're just variations of the same design. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it all apart and show you what's inside. All right, so I've disassembled the customer's chime and I took the two boards out of the case. Let's do a little history lesson on the 55 series electronic musical chimes. The original version was an LA-55 and it came out in May of 1979 and at the same time the original LAC-55 which was the version like this with the clock and the clock chiming it also came out in May of 79. It was updated in August of 79 and then it was also updated in January of 1980. And then there were a couple what they call special versions. The special versions were models that had a larger number and different songs programmed into them. So what we have here is the board on the top is the clock display board. It has the two LED modules here. It has chips to drive the LEDs. It has the circuitry to run the clock, although it works in conjunction with the microprocessor on the main board, and it's pretty much just the clock board. This is simply a board that's added to a standard LA or LB55 board to make it into an LBC. So that's this is pretty foolproof. There isn't really much that ever goes wrong with these. Most of the problems that you encounter are on the main board. The first thing, the most prominent thing you see on the main board is the key panel here, the touchpad. And this is a source at this point in time, you know, this chime is 1980, so it's 36 years old. And the problem that, we, that you have with these is these, the buttons or the pads in them fail. And they fail because these were what were commonly referred to as bubble switches. And surprisingly enough, or perhaps not surprisingly enough, this is another one I have. 
If you look on the back of it, it was made by Texas Instruments Incorporated. And these were the same type of bubble switch pads that Texas Instruments used on inexpensive calculators in the late 70s through the mid or late 80s, I think. The only difference is Newtone put its own overlay over the over the standard buttons to indicate what the functions are. Unfortunately, bubble switches lose their bubble. They go flat after a while, and when enough of them go flat, it would be as if you were pushing a bunch of the buttons all at one time, and that jams up how the chime works. There is no repair on these. It's a sealed unit. And I have looked and looked and looked, and I can't seem to find anyone that has any of these available any longer. You would think with all the popularity of vintage sort of electronics, and there are a lot of people who collect vintage calculators, that there would be a solution to replace these, but we haven't been able to find them. Bubble switch pads are a problem, and usually when they're really, really bad, the best we can hope for is to scavenger one, uh, a used one in better condition to replace the really worn out one. Fortunately, on this fella's chime, it doesn't work too badly. Sometimes you, when you push it, you'll get a double bounce, which means if you push nine, you might get two nines on the display, but you can simply clear it and try again. And it's not like you're pushing the buttons every day. So it gives it character is the way I put it. If we lift up the, pad, the keypad and look underneath, it's actually a fairly simple layout here. This portion of the board here is the triggering portion, and these are where the screws go through the back of the board and the wires from the different doorbell buttons on the exterior of the house would be connected. You have front, side, and rear. Down here, you have, this is primarily all power supply down here. You've got a couple voltage regulators. You've got a bunch of capacitors for filtering. Down here, this is this is an op this is an op amp, and this is sort of a little preamp circuit over here. And here we have an LM3800, or in later models, an LM3900. This is a little amplifier IC, and you've got some supporting components to make that work. And this, all of this, everything around in this area, around the perimeter of the board, this is all sort of standard, off the shelf, easy to find, not hard to repair sort of problems. And then we run up against the heart of the whole thing. And the heart of the whole thing is this chip right here. This is an Intel Model 8021 microprocessor. And this is truly the heart of the chime. And if we take a quote out of the service manual for the LA55 series chimes, Newtone thought it was important. This is from 1980. And they thought it was important. They put out a supplemental service booklet to help service centers deal with something like an electronic chime with a microprocessor. And what it says in the manual is the microcomputer, this, and its associated components form the heart of the system. The microcomputer contains the entire chime operating program in its read only memory. The program is like an endless loop of instructions, which the microcomputer sequentially executes one step at a time over and over again. Most of the microcomputer's time is spent cycling repeatedly through the part of the program dealing with the scanning, the input circuitry from the keyboard and front and rear and side buttons and so on and so on and so on. In another service technical bulletin that Newtone sent out, they state very clearly that the microprocessor is the chime. There was a lot, I think there was a lot of confusion with service centers about this type of design because this was a new idea and this is the chime. The rest of this is all just supporting components and supporting circuitry. The Intel 8021 is actually the chime. It, it's a microprocessor. It contains the program and the instructions that make the chime operate the way it does. It contains the programming to make the different songs sound the way they're supposed to. And it truly is the heart of the chime. If you have a chime with a failed microprocessor, you have nothing. You have a board that doesn't operate. And the only way to repair a board like that is to have another microprocessor that's been pre-programmed 
to put in its place. Unfortunately, these are no longer available from Newtone. They haven't been for almost a decade now. While you can still find Intel 8021 chips, there's no way to program them and there is no program. The microprocessor is essentially the chip. If you have a failed microprocessor, you have a failed chime. If you rob a working microprocessor out of another board to put in your chime, then the other board becomes a non-functional chime. So there's no workaround for this. This is the brain of the system. This has all of the information. Why is this so special for 1980? Well, if you think about it, the Intel 8021 microprocessor was first introduced in 1975. This chime came out in 1979, so it was four years later. There was probably a year or 18 months of development of the product, could have been two years. So as soon as something like the microprocessor came out in 1975, Newton thought it was a good idea. They began to develop the LB55 series, and in 1979 it was introduced. Primarily, what goes wrong with them are all of the electrolytic capacitors on them fail and they fail simply due to age. This is 36 years old and if we do a little math it equals 315,360 hours and that's how many hours this customer's chime has been mounted to the wall in his house waiting to be rung and that's an enormous amount of time to put on electronic components and components like capacitors have a lifespan and when they reach the end of their theoretical lifespan then they slowly begin to fail. The, sign, the first signs of failure in something like a door chime is you'll start to hear a low-level background hum on the, on the speaker in the chime. That's really the point that these should have been disconnected and repaired, but unfortunately people have a tendency to ignore those kind of problems, and they don't really do anything about it either until the, the buzz or the hum becomes annoyingly loud or the chime stops working altogether. Now, most of the common components, everything on this board is replaceable except for the microprocessor. Occasionally, you will get a chime in where the microprocessor is dead. Since they're very hard to find, it takes a lot of troubleshooting to figure out to make sure that it's dead. And then the question is often, well, why is it dead? This type of technology, the way these type of chips were designed back in the 70s, they're very susceptible to voltage fluctuations. They don't like to be overpowered. They're susceptible to static discharges for those of you that live in areas with lightning storms. All of those things can affect it. But the things that affect it the most are when you have an aging board and you have aging power supply components on the board, you get in the power rails, the circuitry that powers the microprocessor, you get what's called ripple. And ripple is a waveform. Instead of it being DC, which is a nice clean straight line, you get these waves in the power like this. And the microprocessors don't like that. And if it's left that way for a long period of time, like chimes tend to be left, it can damage it and then you have nothing. It's not even uncommon. I did a repair on a chime just like this eight or nine months ago. I repaired it, we tested it, it worked fine. I sent it back to the customer. He reinstalled it in his house and it worked properly for about three months and then poof, it went dead. And when he sent it back to me for me to look at it again, it had a failed microprocessor. Fortunately, after three months, I was able to find a donor chime that I could rob it out of, swap the microprocessor into his chime. It's actually testing on the bench right now. And if it behaves itself for the next three or four more days, we're going to pack it up and send it back to him. But it's a long process to do that because these are not readily available. If you're interested in having your LBC55 repaired, and you notice that you're starting to have problems with it, do it sooner than later. The longer you wait, the more likely it will die. 
if it's not too terribly bad like this one, even though this one sounded pretty horrible when I rang it in the beginning of the video, it's not very far gone yet. It's not uncommon for, it to, for them to sound a lot like this one does when they have really just begun to fail. Or this one's probably been failing for a while. So I'm going to rebuild this and then put it all back together. And at the end of the video, we'll ring it again and see if it sounds any better. So that's sort of an overview of the LA and LB and LBC 55s. If you have one of these, they're very nice chimes and they're certainly worth repairing. So I'll be back in a bit and let's see what we can do to get this one working properly again. <laughs> As you can see, our LBC55 is working again. That was the uh, 12 o'clock midnight or 12 o'clock noon chime. And let's go ahead and test the songs and see how it compares to what they sounded like in the beginning of the video. So this is the standard eight note Westminster. The second song we played was number 11. And of course that sounds much more familiar now than what it sounded like as it croaked it out the first time. And then finally we'll do the Anniversary Waltz, which is the longest song that it plays. And there you go. And the time has changed. It's now 12.01. And this will sit on the bench for the next three or four days to make sure it behaves itself and it doesn't develop any other problems. It was a fairly straightforward, primarily just rebuild the age-related components on the board. Uh, there was a couple voltage regulators that I changed because they were fairly far out of spec. So if you have an LBC or an LB55 and it isn't totally dead yet and your house didn't get hit by lightning or have some other terrible thing happen to it, it's very likely that it can be repaired. But you have to do that with some amount of caution if you send it in because even if it works, after it's repaired, there's no real guarantee on how long it'll last. Could be months, could be weeks, could be years, could be another decade. It's really, really hard to tell. When a microprocessor is involved, if it has some amount of damage and it's not apparent when the chime is operational, it's really hard to guess how long it's going to last. Unfortunately, there is no method to measure the condition of a microprocessor. It's one of those either it works or it doesn't. It would be nice if we could come up with a supply of replacement microprocessors. Newton used to actually sell them as a separate part that you could buy. You could order it from the parts department and uh, you would have them on hand. And if a customer's had a problem, you would just pop out the chip and pop in the new one and you would be all set. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore today. And as hard as we've tried, while we can find 8021 microprocessors. These are two that I bought recently. These are brand new from in they were actually in Intel chip holders when I bought them. They came from a fella in Israel. Uh, he seems to have a supply of them. Unfortunately the equipment and the technology that it takes to insert a program chip and read the information, copy it out of the chip, and then reprogram it into a blank chip. The method and the technology and the equipment to do that seems to be gone in the world. There isn't anyone that I can find that can really do it, not, at least not at a reasonable rate. You really can't do something like that and have it cost $40 of chip because people simply won't spend that kind of money to get their chime repaired. So it's an uphill battle on these, but we work really hard. Fortunately, we buy up used chimes to rob parts out of and we do whatever we can to keep them working. So that's all for today. I hope you found this interesting and helpful and perhaps a little better than my first video that I posted almost two years ago. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you would subscribe to our channel, we would appreciate it. Our YouTube channel and this video are ad-free. 
Uh, they always will be. So by subscribing, you raise our search rankings, and that more, means more people can find our videos. That's all for today. See you on the next video.